That brings us to the next part of the synthesis flow, which is constraint definition. So following elaboration, the design is loaded into the synthesis tool and stored inside a data structure. Now we have things such as hierarchical ports, inputs and outputs, uh, registers, and so forth, and we can access them by name. And here's just a small example of some uh, SDC commands or tickle commands that can be used to access these things. We'll learn about this uh, in detail in the next lecture. Okay, we can load the design constraints now in what's called an SDC or synopsis design constraints format, and we'll learn all about that. So we use a command inside a genus called read SDC, read SDC minus verbose, and we point to this SDC file again, which we'll learn about the format, we'll learn about the different constraints and how to define them. Um, I'm not going to do it now because they're very relevant for timing and so forth, but just believe me that there's these constraints for right now. Um, for example, just the basic command that we're going to do is create clock, which will create the clock and define the frequency of the clock with this period thing and the name of the clock and which port the clock actually is driven to uh, the design through. Again, I'm not going to discuss constraints right now. I just wanted to point out that this is the point in the, synthesis, in the synthesis flow where we apply them because now we actually have this structure. We know what the reg registers are because they were inferred and so forth. And so we can do different things like get ports and get cells and so forth. Um, but again, we'll go into this in, uh, in detail in the next lecture. So just one point, it's very important in the synthesis tool to carefully check that all the constraints were accepted because if we made a mistake or so forth, we may not be constraining our design in the way we, um, we should have.